Good morning, children. Hope you are ready for today's class. Let's let us start the question answers that we are continuing the, from the last class. Okay. So in the last class, we have seen that the Karthika question that is he has uh, saw a cucumber plant in his kitchen garden, which he identified two types of flowers in it. So uh, cucumber is a unisexual flower plant that contains a different that can uh, uh, give the rise to the flowers which are uh, differentiated into male flowers and female flowers in itself so in that plant he saw some flowers or some flowers which had swollen parts around them behind them and some did not have any swollen part behind them so what did he do he removed us all the flowers which did not have the swollen part behind it the part of the flower which had the swollen part behind it are female flowers and which do not have the female flowers behind it or male flowers. So from this we can understand that he had removed some of the flowers. Means which part of the, which flowers did he remove? Means he had removed the male flowers. And which part of the flowers which he had, which had small fruit behind it, they are the female parts. They had the small fruit behind it. From the question we had to understood, we had to understand that uh, uh, part of the flower which had the fruit behind them are female parts that is ovary is present inside it and it contains it develops into the seed and again the fruit in itself from the ovary okay so this is the female part of the flower whereas the part of the flower is not get the we find the fruit swollen part it is called as the male part so you have hope you have understood about this question and we'll move to the next question about the agents of pollination agents of Pollination. What are the agents of pollination? You know very well that A, water, insects, birds, animals, and human beings are the agents of pollination. What are the agents of pollination, children? A, water, insects, birds, animals and human beings. Before going to the pollination, that is agents of pollination, you should know what is pollination. Once again we will rise, that is transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of a flower. So, pollination means, pollination means transfer of pollen grains, transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of the flower. It is called as pollination. This transfer of pollen, pollen grains may also take place in the same flower or in the, in the from one flower to other flower. So if it is a transfer of pollen grains occurs in the same flower then it is called as self-pollination. So, two types of pollination, what are they? Two types of pollination you have already studied. What are the two types of pollination? They are, first one, self-pollination and the other one is cross-pollination. Cross-pollination. Where are the pollen grains produced? Pollen grains are produced in the anthropa flower. Anthropa flower. Anther is produced in the stamen. Stamen consists of anther and filament, where pollen grains are produced in the anther, which is called as a pollen sac. Okay, so in self pollination, transfer of pollen grains from anther of one flower to the stigma of the same flower takes place. If it is the cross pollination, then the transfer of pollen grains from anther of one flower to stigma of another flower takes place. So this is called as a cross pollination okay so here this transfer of pollen grains takes place through the agents of pollination what are the agents of pollination a water insects birds animals and human beings through a if you see so the transfer of pollen grains takes place through the pollen grains are very light in weight and they move through the a when it moves and from one flower to the other the stigma of uh, they reaches the stigma of the other flower or the same flower through A also at times due to the blow of wind and uh, off. Okay, in the water also it takes place. So insects when they fall over the flower, 
for taking the nectar they may the pollen grains may attach to the beak or their um, legs and they may be transferred from one flower to the other flower when they move to the other flower in a similar manner by insects and birds when they move for nectar and the animals and when also for the fruits or leaves when they want to take uh, if the flower the, the flowers may be pollinated in the similar manner okay so this is the case where the pollination takes place by these agents okay next coming to the next question is about see here children in your textbook name the parts of the following plants which they propagate vegetatively you know the vegetative reproduction is a type of asexual reproduction in plants vegetative reproduction is a asexual reproduction in plants the question is about the vegetative propagation of plants it is called as the vegetative reproduction it is a type of asexual reproduction where no formation of gametes takes place or no male and female parts are produced for the fusion of gametes so here the asexual reproduction is a reproduction through stem leaves and roots Here the question is about the potato and bryophyllum. How does the vegetative reproduction takes place in potato and bryophyllum? In potato, the vegetative reproduction, as I said to you before, that it takes place through the eyes of potato. That is, it belongs to the stem part. A part of the eyes of potato is being cut along with the stem and sown in the soil. Then it gives rise to the plant. So vegetative reproduction. or the vegetative propagation of new plant in potato is through stem is it clear and the next is about the bryophyllum in bryophyllum as i said you before that you know it so in uh, it uh, gives rise to the new plant from the the part So this you can see here the leaf notches where a small bud-like leaf arises over the leaf notch. See here, this is the notch. Okay, this is the notch where a leaf, a small leaf or a bud-like arises and develops a leaf. And under the favorable conditions, when they fall over the ground and under the favorable conditions, they give rise to the new plant. Okay, so this is a bryophyllum. Where it gives rise to the new plant. In potato also, every potato it contains the eyes. Okay, if you can see for a few days, you can see the development of the eyes over the potato. These are the eyes of the potato, which when removed, they give rise to the new plant. Okay. They are. They give rise to the new plant. Next, what is the next question over there? Who am I? I am formed by the fusion of male and female gametes. So this is a sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction involves the fusion of male and female gametes. So who is formed by the fusion of male and female gametes? Fusion of male and female parts results in the formation of zygote so zygote who am i it is a zygote which is formed by the fusion of male and female parts zygote is formed okay next question is i am a part of the plant that can travel long distance and grow to a baby plant so here it is said that it's a part of the plant what are the different parts of the plant seed root stem leaves flowers fruits etc so what can travel from one place to another place and that to to long distance it is being said so it travels to the long distance through the agents of pollination and so on so on so they are they may be the seeds not maybe it is a seed itself in itself seed can travel from one place to another place through the agents Agents of pollination. 
so they disperse seeds are dispersed from one place to other place which you are going to learn about the seed dispersal in the coming topic now after this lesson okay so how are seeds dispersed from one place to other why are they dispersed what happens if they do not disperse from one place to other place everything you are going to learn in the next class okay so seed is formed by the that is a uh, uh, they they travel a long distance from one place to another place and develop into the new plant seed develops to a baby plant so this travels into a bisexual reproduction this is through the sexual reproduction where the seed is formed next plants now all of you see the text books properly flowers containing both male and female parts are called types of flowers you have learned unisexual flowers bisexual flowers complete flowers and incomplete flowers isn't it unisexual flowers are the flowers which contains only single part either androecium or gynoecium single sexual organ that is androecium and gynoecium and bisexual flowers are the flowers which contains both male and female parts in them okay so first one is unisexual flowers second one bisexual flowers third one complete flowers and the last one is incomplete flowers then you can see the unisexual flowers for the flowers which contain either androecium or gynoecium so if they contain androecium they are called as male flowers if they contain gynoecium they are called as female flowers bisexual flowers these are the flowers which contain both androecium and gynoecium in them so that is both male and female parts are present in them so a flower containing both male and female parts are called as bisexual flowers that is the answer for the blank given over there here complete flowers you know it if a flower contains all the flower with the calyx corolla androecium and gynoecium then it is called as a complete flower an incomplete flower contains a if it a if any of the four whorls is missing in it whether it is a calyx or corolla or androecium or gynoecium any one of the whorl is missing in it then it is called as an incomplete flower okay children so this is about the types of flowers you know it and examples too complete flowers example are ipomia hibiscus and uh, Uh, that one. incomplete plants cucumber papaya bitter gourd water gourd all are the gourds families that belong to the gourd families or belong to the incomplete plants where they contain the sexual parts that is male part and male plants and female plants flowers differently so they are unisexual plants or present in them okay so this is about the blanks children and the next question in the blank see there pollen grain from anth of one flower that reaches to the stigma of another flower it is called as cross pollination i have already explained you in the pollination next from dash part of the bryophyllum new plants are produced the type of vegetative propagation where the leaves are produced where the plants are produced through the leaves modification through leaves next agents of pollination are i have already explained you the agents of pollination as air water insects birds animals and human beings so you can write over transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma in simple definition of pollination so next match the following pollen grains where do where you get the pollen grain so pollen grains are present in anther of a flower again i am revising you matching the pollen as a pollen is very easy for you pollen grains are present in the anther of a flower they are the main parts of the flower anther is the is the contained in the stamen stamen consists of anther and filament where anther consists of the pollen grains anther is also called as pollen sac next is ovule ovule belongs to the female part of the flower so female part of the flower which ovary which contains the ovules where ovules develop into the seeds and ovary develop into the fruit after the fertilization process fertilization means fusion of male and female gametes a process in which involves the fusion of male and female gametes in the form resulting in the formation of zygote that is called as fertilization of the fertilization process ovules are developed into the seeds and the ovary is developed into the fruit especially ovules are present in ovary present in ovary 
So ovules belongs to ovary. You have to write over that. Next, reproduction through stem and reproduction through leaves. I already told you reproduction through stem takes place in potato, ginger, turmeric, and all the modified modified uh, the stem modifications we can include into the reproduction through stems and reproduction through leaves, bryophyllum, begonia, or the leaves which more reproduce their new plants through the leaves. Okay, and this is the complete revision of your reproduction in plants chapter two. So some of the blanks I'll ask you so that you can easily answer. Transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma is called. So you have to answer and send it to me. Okay. Transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma. Next. From dash part of bryophyllum, new plants are produced. From dash part of bryophyllum, new plants are produced. Third one, pollen grain from anther of one flower that reaches the stigma of another flower is called dash. Pollen grain from anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower is called dash. Flowers containing both male and female parts are called dash. Next, production of offspring from zygote is called dash. Production of offspring from zygote. Hope you can answer these five questions and send it to me. Children, so write the answers for these questions that is the assignment that is given to you and you can write down in your notes and send it to me later. Okay? When the, it is river, the school reopens, you can bring it to my notice of them. All of you should complete the assignments given to you regularly. Okay, children? Thank you. Hope you will do the best. The lesson is being completed and move to the next lesson that is uh, save this person. Thank you, children. Bye.